The first question you may ask when you see the title of this video is, well, what is the most important bank in the world? I'll answer that question and so much more as we explore. Well the dollar or any other currency from any other bank around the world. There's, there's an example of a few other types of currencies that you may come across, you know, or, or may have some been around at some point in time, uh, no matter where you're at uh, in the world. There's a lot of different currencies that are out there for sure. And this applies to every single person, uh, whether they represent these nations or any other nation around the world. Because it doesn't matter what nation you are part of, this bank is really close to all of you. There's no question about that. So when you think about what is the most important bank in the world, you're looking at it. Actually, in order to see it, you got to look in the mirror. It's you, your bank, you're a bank. That's right. Believe it or not, and like it or not, you are a bank of some sort, of some measure. Now, you may be a strong bank or you may be a weak bank. But nonetheless, even if you have money in your account uh, at a bank, you withdraw it typically, and it's available to you to purchase uh, goods and services. And maybe the best way to put it is if you take out cash of any sort um, or uh, write a check, Essentially, you've got it at your disposal. It's a promissory note, a check or some sort of credit card or what have you. Um, you've got money at your disposal. Uh, you are the arbiter of the money that you have in your account, the currency. I know some people don't like, like it when I call this money, but regardless, it doesn't matter if it's a failing currency from, from, uh, from a long time ago, that a currency that is no longer around, or it could be a piece of currency that um, uh, is active today. Um, it doesn't no matter what kind of currency it is. It's essentially sort of a promissory note. Um, it is a debt instrument. And that is what it's about. It's about taking these things out, having them in your possession, and storing them up for use at a later time. Even if it's to take the money out of the bank, the currency and go down to your uh, local uh, supermarket and buy groceries with it. You've spent it, but while it was in your possession, you've essentially banked it. And yes, you can take that to the bank. But what do we think of when we think of a bank and bank runs? That talk has been uh, all over the news as of late, and it's only subsided a bit, but it's still on the top of mind of many Americans here and of course, many Europeans as well, because that's kind of where the crisis is now. But even there, it's kind of subsided a bit. Who knows? It may take quite a while before uh, we see any talk of, uh, of any kind of bank runs again, especially with all the other stuff that is in the news that you may hear about maybe another uh, semi-big bank fa failing down the road. It may not make uh, that big of news. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, a bank run is kind of where the fear is. And that is a contagion factor uh, that certainly is is is, uh, is uh, of the of the news and it is something that is a real fear uh, for many of us out there. And of course, we know that they're going to bail out the big banks for sure, but certainly not a bank in Oklahoma or a, a small credit union somewhere. And they certainly will not bail you out, you as the banker because you hold these uh, currencies, these notes in your hand. Now, I'm gonna put some of these back because we're looking at the dollar right now and most of my viewers are American, but they can be from any country in the world. This applies to us all. And uh, this is a way that we can strengthen uh, the banking system uh, among many of my viewers. And that's what I wanna encourage you to do because what is the most important bank in the world? You being that banker, you being the, uh, the master of your own destiny, and that includes your financial destiny, and it also includes your monetary destiny. 
And that's right. And that's why I think we should take this form of money, which I refer to as unsound money, because yes, it is indeed a debt instrument. It says so right on the note. It's a Federal Reserve note uh, by the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Uh, this has lost about 98% of its value since the inception of that act in December of 1913 to where it is now, uh, which means that, yea, though it is a store of value, it is a declining store of value over time. And so when you hold these in your possession, that is one way to prevent a run on the bank because you're holding these dollars. But the thing is, is you don't want to hold too many of these because it's a losing proposition. And even though I am a proponent of holding a currency in your account uh, or in your possession, and I'm talking about literally outside of the banking system, you hold dollars in a secure location in your home or in a safe location outside of the financial institutions. Uh, and you do that to prevent bail-ins, uh, which are, have been talked about more and more lately, when that's where essentially they charge you to hold money in the bank as opposed to the other way around. Now, most savings accounts, unless you move them into a money market, they're paying next to zero, uh, next to nothing in interest rates. 0.01% we're looking at for people to have money in a savings account now. It's a pain in the butt to have to open a new new account and move those markets in, especially if you have uh, creditors or whatever and um, agencies, you know, utilizing and uh, tapping into those accounts. You've got to reset all that up, up again, and it's just a pain to do. But nonetheless, you earn a little bit of interest in it, at least now when since the Federal Reserve has raised rates. But then again, we don't know what the future holds. I think most of the institutions probably are at least sound for now. We certainly don't want to panic or anything like that. But with talks of bank runs, um, you know, the biggest bank run problem is if you have a bank run on your own bank, which is you. In other words, you deplete your money. You, you deplete your, your financial resources. You don't want that. You don't want to lose money, right? Even if it's depreciating in value. So that's why you have some of these on hand, these dollars, or what other or other currency you may have in, in your possession, you hold on to these uh, notes as sort of a protector against, with this unsound money, you use it to protect your sound money. That's right. That's exactly what we are aiming for, folks, because the ultimate store of wealth and value is gold and silver. And, uh, you know, there's a video I posted not long ago called Be Your Own Central Bank. I'm going to link to it at the end screen of this video. It's one of my more important videos. It talks about how you can be your own central bank because, uh, well, this is what central banks do. They hold gold in their coffers to protect themselves against things that are happening like right now. In fact, last year in 2022, uh, the... Uh, the central banks accumulated more gold than they have in 50 years since 1967, which is a very special year because it was the year that the first one ounce gold bullion coin uh, was issued into circulation, the South African Krugerrand. So it's uh, quite unique. And in that regard, you know, gold is uh, a protector. And when the Bank of International Settlements, which is the central bank of central bankers, essentially regarded gold as a tier one asset, it essentially put it on par with and equal to cash, upgrading it from a tier three asset. This means that it is as good as cash between central banks for transactions and the like. You can bet on gold and central banks around the world certainly have uh, last year and they continue to do so this year, although it has slowed down, I think some. However, regardless, and that means that uh, you, as a central bank, can be strong by holding gold in your portfolio. Now, you'll notice here that I also have silver as well. And silver is certainly a way to protect yourself as well. It is an inflation hedge if purchased in, in the right way. Because there is now, I believe, a wrong way uh, that where you can lose really with both metals, but especially silver. 
as it's a bit more volatile. So I think silver is a good idea to have on hand uh, for transactions, the potentially, or to move around. But you have three areas of safeguard. I think gold should probably be held long term uh, in, in your portfolio as a stable store of, of value. Silver should be held sort of to protect your gold in some regards. But uh, with, it's a very strategic metal to have it on hand. But when you think about them as a savings vehicle, that's where you put your savings is in a bank. So when you have your own, essentially, way to protect your assets, such as gold and silver. And by the way, that if you, if you do store them at home, uh, and I um, am a proponent of storing it at home and also spreading that wealth around to trusted family friends that are outside of your home. If you can find a way to do that, I strongly recommend that it's what I do um, to that way you're not a target in case somebody finds out. But uh, regardless, if you have no other options, you store them at home in a secure vault and you're well protected with great security cameras and, uh, and sensors and detectors. Uh, inside and outside your home, uh, just like the banks do, and also have arm, uh, plenty of bullets and plenty of guns. Uh, you cannot have too many bullets, and really, I don't think you can have too many guns um, either. There's no such thing as overkill when it comes to your own personal protection, and uh, whatever caliber is appropriate and type of gun is appropriate for close quarters or even long quarters. You know, it's a uh, 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 home and self-preservation and protection of your valuables as well as your life is a paramount and profound. So keep that in mind uh, for sure. And those are the attributes of what a bank is, right? A uh, bank, you can't just walk into a bank and go in the vault and steal whatever's in there. And same thing with you yourself. You've got to be protected. And gold and silver pr provide protection uh, in these times. And you uh, being the bank owner, you have to um, secure your protect your, your assets that are protecting you monetarily and financially. So uh, that's how you prevent a bank run: is you uh, hold gold and silver, and a, a key word being hold it. That's right, you hold on to it. There are people in this community who strategically buy and sell it at opportune times, um, and, and and there everybody's different with how they do it. But in, in a general sense, in the long run, uh, the best method is to hold it for the long term. It's a long term proposition, proposition uh, silver and gold. And so there it is. And you can help protect that by having some of these currencies on hand, um, uh, extras of them, in case you run into an emergency. Well, you can spend these for the emergency uh, so that you don't have to spend these. In other words, to do a run on your own bank, on you. You don't wanna make a run on yourself, you as the bank. So there you have it. Uh, hope you found this video insightful, educational, and informative. And I wanna extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch this video. And to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.